All right, Lap Traffic Nation joining me on the line, making his fourth appearance on the Lap Traffic Podcast. He is the driver of the number four with JD Motorsports. Welcome back to the show, Landon Castle. Landon, what's going on, man? How are you? Oh, man, I'm, I'm doing great, Brandon. Thank, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. And um, second of all, how about... How about how far you've come since the last time I was on this show? Man, it's been a minute, and man, thank you, man. It's, it's year five. Uh, I'm excited to kick this thing off with a bang. Uh, I'm excited to have been able to survive this long because, you know, <laughs> uh, everyone's doing podcasting and uh, to, to stay relevant and fresh, at least I think I am, and, and all that. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and, and I'm really excited to have you back on the show, man. That's great, man. That's that's awesome. Yeah, you got a good good deal going. Appreciate that, man. Listen, all right, let's get into it, man. Uh, new announcement came out last week that you'll be driving full time in the Xfinity Series with JDM. Uh, this is going to be your first full season in Xfinity since 2014, and that was also your first full year in Xfinity. Uh, talk about the partnership and, and all that stuff and how this all came to play. Yeah, I mean, really, uh, Johnny called me over the off season and and said, Hey, let's get the band back together. And, um, you know, I felt like he, he's, he's got a really good group of drivers <clears throat> with Jeffrey and Colby and, and Ryan. And he kind of just wanted to complete the set and, 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 and see that four car run well again. So, um, last year he had, you know, a rotating group of drivers that all did a really good job for him. But I think that the team really benefits the most by just having a consistent guy in the seat. So, um, hopefully we can see some, some good performance this year. I know that the cars are some of the nicest cars that, that I've seen come out of that shop and, and hopefully we can find some sponsorship along the way as well. You know, you, you've been, a you've been around both series for quite some time. Um, you know, I, I know everyone kind of asks, you know, what's the difference in the cars and all that kind of stuff. But when, when you are going to make that full switch back, to that to the Xfinity series, is it going to be any type of an adjustment for you uh, early on, getting comfortable and, and all that back in the Xfinity car? Um, you know, ho hopefully not, just because I, I've actually spent a lot of time in Xfinity cars over the last couple of years, just with the work that I did with Morgan Shepard, and um, <clears throat> and so I do feel like I've stayed sharp on what those cars need, and. And really, they're very similar to what the low downforce cup cars are and what they need. So um, they just don't have as much grip as the cup cars do. Um, they still have inspection heights. Um, and, and the rules really haven't changed that much. So, I mean, shoot, the cars that we're going to be racing this year, um, the way they're set up and, and the way the, the characteristics of those cars is pretty similar to what they've been for the last five or six years so i think that helps a lot uh, for me to be able to get right back into it um but but like i said i i've had i've i've been relevant in, in xfinity cards in the last couple of years sure. in terms of the, the laps that i've made in morgan stuff so um so i feel like going back to these racetracks it's not going to be too much different it's just going to be a matter of getting dialed in <clears throat> um at jd motorsports and and as well as you know, doing it in the race and not necessarily in practice because we don't have practice for the majority of the schedule. Yeah. No. So is that something, are you a fan of that? Would you, are you the one that would like practice? Are you cool with it? Do you like the limited practice and qualifying that they're doing? Um, <clears throat> I think I'm a fan of, of no practice. Um, just because I think that it's, it really, um, it's really pushes the team and, and can allow me to push the team to make sure that our cars are, are where they need to be when we unload on Friday or on, on, on Saturday. Saturday yeah, um, right. And um, I, I say unload on Friday because that's what you usually say when it comes to practicing. Yep. Um, so, but now we're unloading on Saturday and we're racing. So um, I think it's just, it really pushes the teams to, to be right when they unload on race day. And then I, I think it pushes me to be um, prepared and to not feel like, oh, okay, I don't really have to think about anything until I get to my practice. I'll just wait and see what the car feels like in practice. Where this is like, hey, you know, I, we need to be ready and, and know exactly what we got on race day. Um, and and also, I think it's 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 going to be good for me as a driver and really other drivers, uh, in a sense that you you got what you got. You know, if if the car is too loose when the race starts, you're going to have to figure it out. Right. Um, and and. We're normally, you know, if your car is too loose on, I, like I've had this happen many times, um, 
where the car, the balance of the car isn't where I wanted it on Friday. Uh, so, you know, maybe I, I steer the team in a direction. And then by Saturday, I, I realize, oh man, we shouldn't have, we, we did it, overdid it or we went too far. Um, uh, where <clears throat> now I think you just got what you got. And so you kind of have to bring a good car and trust, trust what you brought. Right. Yeah. Cause there's, uh, I mean, obviously there's only so much in terms of tightening up or loosening up that you can do on pit road during, you know, stage break cautions and, and cautions right. that come out, you know, you, you know, it's not like you can climb underneath the thing and make those types of an adjustments. We're talking, you know, some air pressure wedge, you know, minor things that aren't as big a swings as if they were pulling it in the garage after 10 laps of practice. Right. Exactly. Well, listen, man, I got to ask. So, uh, everybody knows on the show, Aaron Studwell, he calls in every other week with weather updates along with Brian Newdorf, longtime friend of the show. Him and Brian will be back, of course, this year. Uh, unique pairing uh, with you and Aaron as Aaron looks to expand his uh, weather consulting business into NASCAR and motorsports. How in the hell did you two get hooked up from a driver PR side of things? Uh, um, well, you know, I think that, that – Honestly, it's just uh, for, for me. It's just uh, looking for talent, and and Aaron is a talented guy, and he knows what he's doing, and um, and I think that you know I firmly believe that he has skills that are beyond uh, beyond weather. Yeah, and, absolutely. And and I think that he be he believe he obviously he believes that too. So his you know consulting business um, has services beyond just that. So. Um, you know, we're, we're working together this year to hopefully, um, find some sponsorship and, and get things going. And, uh, you know, I've got high hopes for him. I think he's going to do a wonderful job. Absolutely. He's got a passion for the sport, you know, uh, unmatched, you know, while, while he may be in the sport and, and, and working with you as a driver, uh, he still has that fan passion, which, uh, is, is why I'm doing this podcast and all that. And, uh, that goes a long way. That's for sure. Yeah, and you know he's got a following too. I mean, he's he's a he's a relevant voice on social media. Yeah. People trust him and, and believe him, and um, and I think there's there's no reason uh, not for you know for for any other driver or team or somebody, um, you know, other companies that need his services to take a look at Exo Consulting. Um, so I you know I feel I feel like maybe I'm the smart guy. Uh, hopefully, the smart guy that that is <laughs> sure. um, is a, the, maybe the, the one of the first ones to just take a. A hard look at him and say hey yeah let's see what you got i love it that's awesome well man listen we're, we're just a couple weeks out from daytona uh it was a crazy 2020 with, with the the pandemic and all an extra off season and all that kind of stuff uh has this off season felt longer shorter are you more excited to get behind the wheel and get things fired up or do you need a few more weeks still <laughs> uh, i will say the off season felt has felt like a long off season um, I don't know if it's felt that way for other people, but uh, it, it's it's just it just feels like uh, it's just really unique. You know, it's it feels really weird. It feels like a different type of NASCAR, a different type of schedule. Um, you know, we're we're still kind of continuing into this sort of pandemic mentality where um, the schedule is abbreviated or or uh, whatever you want to call it with no practice and. Um, you know, that obviously we're going to be limited on, on tracks that we see fans and, and don't see fans. But, um, you know, pretty soon I'm, I'm sure it's going to open up as the world opens up and, and we'll be right into it. Absolutely, for sure. Um, how, how's the team forming around? Yeah, you, you guys got your uh, pit crew, crew chief, car chief, uh, all that kind of stuff lined up? <laughs> well, I'm, I mean, I'm leaving that up to Johnny. <laughs> he knows how to assemble a team. Um, but obviously I'll be working with Brian Barry this year and, um, and just the whole crew there at JD Motorsports and they're, um, um, you know, they've just done such a good job and come a long ways uh, in the last few years. So uh, I'm excited to uh, get the Gaffney Peach Mafia back together. Absolutely. I love it. Um, all right. So listen, we got some new tracks on the schedule this year. Uh, which one, two are, are you most excited about going to? Um, man, I mean, I think that uh, I'm, I'm excited to tackle the road courses this year. Um, you know, obviously Coda is going to be exciting. Um, I'm really excited to, uh, to go there. Um, I think I'm going to come to the road courses more prepared than ever. So, uh, you know, I'd say that one's definitely circled on my radar. 
Awesome. All right, now you got to tell me, are, are you a fan of, of racing on some dirt at Bristol? Uh, not really. <laughs> That's that's been a common response, man. I think I think from a fan perspective, like, you know, we're, we're excited just to see, you know, what that brings. Like, it's it's going to be a show, whether it's a good show, <laughs> bad show, it's going to be a show. Um, and man, I I am I'm curious to see if tykes change after that. But that's going to be an interesting yep. weekend. That's for sure, man. <laughs> yeah, I think it's um, I think it's going to be. I think it's gonna be very entertaining. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, and and honestly, that's that's fine too. I don't I don't think I mean I don't know. I shouldn't say this, but I just I, I don't know if it's gonna be a great quality. Uh, but I don't know what is quality. I guess it's it's probably gonna be a great race. I mean, the race for the win is probably gonna be great. The the mid pack racing is gonna be unpredictable. If if nothing else, because you have a bunch of drivers that are just experiencing something new. Yes. Yeah, for and, sure. And teams, there's no notebook. And, there's no notebook. And you have teams that are experiencing new things. They have cars that aren't built for dirt racing. Like, so, you know, I think the racing is going to be fantastic. I think the, it's going to be entertaining. Um, so I, I don't think that it's going to be a failure by any means. Um, I think the only rub for me on it is just like, our, our cars aren't dirt cars. Like, you know, I have a, I have a great appreciation for dirt late models and sprint cars and dirt modifieds like the technology that those teams have developed on those cars over the last 30 years is is really incredible the way that the rear end housing moves under the car and the way that they use um the drivetrain um to lift the car off the ground and drive you know drive force um, into the ground to create grip um like it's just it's unbelievable what those guys come up with and and so you know to in my mind it's like to put a truck arm car on dirt and call it dirt racing doesn't serve real dirt racing sure um any justice you know like no i hear where you're coming from absolutely so but it's that doesn't take it to me i i hope that i can say that without taking anything away from the fact that it's going to be a tremendous race it's going to be great racing, um, and it's going to be extremely entertaining to watch. Absolutely, absolutely. That 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 is a given for sure. Uh, listen, man. Aside from racing on the track, you and uh, uh, Parker Kligerman have put together a uh, a little mini i racing series that uh, picked up some traction last year, and it's looking to come back bigger <coughs> and better this year. Uh, talk a little bit about the e racer series and the Carnomaly Five Hundred coming up. Yeah, we uh, Parker and I, you know, we just want to bridge the gap between sim racing and real world racing, and and so our first step of doing that was um, let's let's put on events on i racing that um, if we can let's let's try to reach the caliber and the broadcast quality and the money of of a of a real world racing event. You know, we want there to be money on the line. We want there to be prestige on the line. And, and, you know, and we want to, we want to broadcast it in a professional manner so that, um, so that people watch it and they're entertained and they're impressed with it. Um, and then, and then for the competitors, you know, th- these iRacers, they're, these, they're real racers. It, and, and for these thousands of drivers on iRacing that may, some of, most of them have never driven a real race car, uh, that doesn't mean they're not racers. And so we want to treat them like real racers and, you know, hopefully we can build a brand and build a platform where, you know, if you compete in an e-racer event and if you compete at a high level, uh, you're rewarded not just with money um, and prizes, but you're rewarded with respect and, and, and a platform to, you know, promote yourself. So because a lot of them are um, trying to make their way through some sort of racing rank, whether it's on iRacing itself or, you know, in their Twitch streamers and they want to build an audience or, or you have guys like Raja Karuth who, um, you know, iRacing is his platform and his proving ground uh, to build his real racing career um, at Rev Racing and, and beyond into NASCAR. So, you know, we just want to be a part of, of building a platform for drivers to to accomplish those goals. So we, we have a huge event coming up, the Carnomaly 500. It's going to be in February. Um, it's, it's sort of our take on, on a 500-mile race in Daytona. 
and but we're using uh, an unrestricted version of the cot car on iRacing, and the car goes 230 miles an hour the tires are blistered by after four laps nice um and it's it's impossible to drive it's really really challenging i mean think about racing at daytona where you have to lift and use the brakes like you were at chicago um and and that's that's what it's like racing in our event so there's tons of draft down the straightaway. The leader can't get away from the pack, but when you get into the corner, you have to slow down. You have to use the brakes. The car wants to slide up the track, and there's tons of passing. Um, so we, we have an event structure that can support almost 500 competitors. We, it's, we have five nights of broadcasting, narrowing the field down to 43 drivers, and those 43 drivers are going to race in a 500-mile race with no resets, um, building their own setups, and for for a prize purse of fifteen thousand dollars, it's going to be three thousand to win. And um, you know, it's like a it's like a decent uh, you know Saturday Saturday night big money short track race. That's awesome, man. I mean, oh. who who would have thought lifting at a super speedway? There, there's <laughs> a, there's a thought for everybody. <laughs> it's it's really cool, but you know, we we're pretty serious about it. Uh, we're we're treating it like it's a professional event. Um, Parker and I have invested. Um, very heavily in the broadcast itself. So we, we're doing um, the broadcast in-house. Uh, we've hired we've hired people from the gaming industry um, that that really know what they're doing, and um, and we're building all of the broadcast assets ourselves. All the, the behind-the-scenes stuff that the viewers will never know about um, is all, you know, it's all our our own IP. Um, so we'll be able to recreate these broadcasts and, and do more events at, at an even better quality. And, and deliver a, a viewing experience for the fans that that really the sport has never seen before. We have an interactive um, fantasy game um, tool that that we're building, so the viewers are are actually going to be involved in the event um, that we'll be talking about soon. So uh, it, it's just it, you know we're just trying to break new ground. We're not trying to do you know what every other sim racing broadcast has done. Sure, sure. No, that's awesome, man. That's that's cool. That's that's it sounds exciting as all hell, man. That's very cool. <clears throat> I love it. I love it. Uh, listen, Landon, uh, we went over here a little bit, but, man, tell everyone where they can keep up with you on social media and give some sponsor plugs, all that good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm Landon Castle on social media, uh, pretty much Instagram, Twitter, everything. If you know how to spell my last name, then you can find me on social media. <laughs> and then, uh, and if you want to know more about what we're doing on, on iRacing, Parker Kligerman and I, um, it's eracer.gg, uh, but it's E R A C R. Uh, so we took the E from the middle of the word and moved it to the front of the word. Love it. Uh, and uh, and that there you'll find everything you need to know about our iRacing and stuff. That's awesome. Lap Traffic Nation, huge thanks to Landon for calling into the show tonight. Landon, enjoy the rest of the off season if that's possible. Good luck this season. Good luck at Daytona. Good luck with the e-racing series. And uh, definitely look forward to talking to you soon, man. Thanks, Brandon. Take care.